Welcome to the Ocula, my private study. We can speak here without fear of being overheard. I have much to explain, but the truths which I must touch upon in doing so would cause only distress and confusion to the people of this world. Pray keep that in mind. Now, I am sure you are desperate to know the fate of your fellow Scions. To put it simply, they are here in the first. Their arrival, however, was not as recent as you may imagine. Here, time flows at a different pace from that of the Source. In the space of a single hour in your home world, an entire year might pass in the first, and the reverse could also be true. The pace fluctuates without rhyme or reason, and it cannot be predicted. That said, we seem to be entering a period of mere equivalence. And thus, for the moment, you need not overly concern yourself with the passage of time. As for your companions, however, Eustola and Urianger have dwelt here for three winters, all told, while Thancred's count stands at five. Even our more recent arrivals, Alphino and Alize, have lived in the first for almost a year. My intention had been to summon only you, but the art of reaching across worlds has proven exceedingly difficult to master. Thus it was that my fumbling hand closed upon those to whom your fate is most closely bound as well. As they were not the object of my summons, their transference was incomplete. Though they may appear to possess corporeal bodies, they are, in truth, merely spirits that one can see and touch. Consequently, while you yourself will be able to pass between worlds with relative freedom, they will not. Much as it grieves me, they are stranded here, unable to return. We spent every waking hour searching for a way to reverse the summoning. In the beginning, at least. As you may have surmised, however, our efforts met with little success. And then we all but abandoned the endeavor once Urianger shared with us the vision he had witnessed during his journey through the rift. In that chaotic no man's land between realms, Time and space warp and blend in unexpected ways. What Urianger saw was the future, that which would one day come to pass. In his vision of tomorrow, the first was rejoined with the source. This collision of worlds brought about the eighth umbral calamity and the deaths of countless multitudes. Amongst those who perished, Urianger clearly saw the fall of the Scion's mightiest champion. He watched you die. And thus did the Scions embrace their exile, and began searching this world for a means to forestall the coming catastrophe in yours. Their souls are stranded in the first, yes, but they have fought on, desperate to save their home and you from destruction. Nor have their efforts been in vain, for it was they who finally established that the elimination of the Sin Eaters will indeed serve to prevent the Calamity. Considering these circumstances of our meeting, you would be forgiven for doubting my version of events. And so, before all else, I would suggest you track down your comrades and hear the tale from their lips. I shall of course be happy to assist in these reunions, and you need not make any decisions regarding your involvement until you are certain of where you stand. Meanwhile, I promise I will not rest until I have found a way to help your friends return home. What say you? Have I earned your trust for the moment, at least?
Excellent. You will not regret this. With that settled, we shall have to see about getting you ready for the road. Traveling across the rift has no doubt left you weary. I will arrange for a room where you might rest in comfort. While it's being prepared, perhaps I can show you around. This is the Musica Universalis, the commercial heart of the Crystarium. All you might need to prepare for your journeys can be purchased here. Ah, yes. You must be curious about the currency. Fear not, the gill you carry will serve you well enough. Each nation once minted its own coins, but was all a jumbled mess following the flood. After much debate, the local merchants eventually elected to revert to the old ways, wherein a coin's value was decided by the worth of its metal. As for a unit of measurement, we agreed upon the term gill, a word borrowed from coins uncovered within the crystal tower here. And as our traders peddled their wares across the land, so too did our usage of gill become common practice. From what your stola tells me, a standard coin from the source equates to exactly one gill here, or near enough not to matter. Our way of life has benefited greatly from the artifacts we recovered from the tower, some of which may be familiar to you. But I fear it would not be practical for us to provide everything to which you are accustomed. You shall need a means to access the commodities of your home world. A Van Kerm Sin? Yes, I'm here! Of course I'm here! What amusements do you have for me today? My dear Feo Ool. Paragon of pixie kind. For you, I have the most vital task. This fine gentleman is a friend from a distant realm. And we have need of a means to ferry things back and forth from his home. Might you be able to assist us in this matter? from beyond, didn't you? From beyond the rift? How wonderfully exciting! What a brave and reckless and marvellous thing you did! You've the heart of a pixie, you do! After careful consideration, I have decided to grant you my assistance. Make a pact with me and the fun can begin! But answer me this, traveller. Did your garments come with you when you crossed over? Your teeth? Your nails? Just as I thought! Then you've a good stout connection with your home through which all your belongings, great and small, may easily pass. 
from this moment forth I will be your Isne Fis, and you my Sne Yak. Like the branch which sprouts from the sapling, our bond will flow unbroken from one to the other. Raise your hand. Done. We are bound now, dearest sapling. Come, come then. Make your request. Tell me your desire. I wish to visit this world of yours. Mayhap her message to your friends in the source to inform them of your safe arrival. Consider it done. As you heard, that was Feo Ul of the Pixies. Their kind possess an affinity for magic akin to that of arcane beings. They rarely show themselves in populated areas, but Feo is insatiably curious even by Pixie standards, and seems to have taken a liking to the Crystarium. Right, we were going to organize a room for you, weren't we? Come along. I know you. You're the warrior of light from the source. What? Did you just... You can hear me? How long has it been? And who are you? 
he says. Enemy not worth remembering, apparently. My name is Ardbert. In the first, I was a warrior of light. But in the source, you knew me as the warrior of darkness. If you recall my tale, it was my comrades and I who caused the flood. We thought our home doomed. And so we listened to the Asians. Let them guide us to the source and try to hasten their God's damned ardor. I remember when we fell, defeated by you and yours. I remember our audience with Minfilia, how she listened to our pleas and returned our souls to the first. The flood was poised to swallow Norvrant. Minfilia and my friends, they... They surrendered what little they had left to hold it back. Just faded away. Leaving me to bear witness. Tell me, do you know the year? How much time has passed since we caused the flood? A hundred years. A hundred long years. My hands find no purchase. My gestures catch no eye, and my pleas, be they whispered or screamed, reach not a single ear. I am a shade, cursed to do naught but drift. I feel as if I've been walking forever. I hardly noticed when my mind and body began to fray at the edges. Then bang! My senses were sharp again. I felt like a fish being reeled in, and before I knew it, I found myself in this room. Why is it that you can see me? What are you even doing here, come to that? You were summoned to save the first. A waste of time. This world is beyond saving, like those who try to save it. Muddled as my mind may be, I've not forgotten that. But if fate has brought me to you, the one person in this God's forsaken world who can see and hear me, then perhaps there is a reason I endured. If I can find out why I was left behind, then maybe, maybe I can bring this journey of mine to an end. Well, I'll be watching, Warrior of Light. But do me a favor, be careful out there. This world has had its fill of heroes.
How did you find your new quarters? I trust you were able to rest. I was not aware the room was haunted, and you were rather tired. Well, should you receive another visitation, be sure to let me know. Now, let us return to the subject of the Scion's whereabouts. This map shows the lands of Norvrand, the only area to be spared the Flood of Light. The Crystarium is here, in the region known as Lakeland. And to the north is the Fairy Kingdom of Il Meg. That is where you'll find Urianger. To the east lies the once prosperous civilization of Rak Tika. Your Stola is stationed there, in the heart of the forest. Alas, neither location can be reached without considerable difficulty. As such, I would suggest you first seek out one of the twins, each of whom is stationed but a short flight from the Crystarium. Alphino is on Calusia, an island off the western shore. It is home to a city called Yulmor where the rich and privileged while away their days in idleness. For his part in furthering our cause, Alphino journeyed there to meet with the citizenry and forge alliances. From what I hear, he has since kept himself busy gathering information around the main settlement. Alize, meanwhile, traveled south to the arid wastes of Armoreng. They lie upon the very edge of the inhabitable world, where the flood of light was halted. Those who dwell there live in constant fear of attack by the Sin Eaters. In contrast to her brother, Alize felt that her energies would better be spent learning about the enemy, and thus she sells her services as a guard, both to hone her skills and gather information on our foe. So, will it be Calicia or Armoreng? It matters not which you choose to visit first. Simply inform me once you have made your decision, and I will see to it that you are provided with a suitable mount. Ah, but you must be wondering about Thancred. He has taken up with a new companion, and is presently engaged as a wandering hunter of Sin Eaters. Being ever on the move, his whereabouts are often difficult to ascertain, but I am certain your paths will cross ere long.
The whistling breeze mute, the pounding surf frozen. Time itself takes a breath. At light's edge, all is perfectly still. The world captured in a painting, locked in a moment. Music, faint and fleeting, drifts coastward on the lifeless air. And in the distance, beyond the broken earth, a city beckons.
And how is business today, Mistress Theva? Oh, frenetic. Look, I have a new customer. Tis good to see you, my friend. The barley seeds you wanted. They should produce a better harvest than the last. What, just like that? Oh, well, for no, you really are a dear. Well? I'd best be tidying up some of those empty shacks before the pests move in. Keep an eye on the place while I'm out, eh? It seems an age since last we spoke. Not since the prisoner exchange in Doma. And Yotsu. It has been even longer for me, of course, if you count the days I've spent here. But the time has only added to the relief I feel seeing you safe and well. Huh. Alizé said much the same thing. I don't think I've ever had such a scolding. But I believe an exchange of news is in order. Come. Tell me of your arrival, and all that came before. I see. But the Exarch and Dalize told me what they knew of events, but I had stubbornly clung on to the hope that all-out war might yet be avoidable. And poor Tataru. She must be sick with worry. We must endeavor to return as soon as we may. It would be nice to bring her good tidings for a change. But before we bid this world farewell, we must first ensure that it is not rejoined to the source. We must prevent the Eighth Umbral Calamity. Orianger's vision of the future has, I fear, every chance of coming true. By his description, the catalyst for the Calamity was a formless and deadly weapon employed by the Garlean Empire. Which can only mean one thing. Black Rose. Gaius was telling you the truth. When we were on the trail of the Asians, we saw evidence that the gas was being manufactured once more. Gaius was adamant that the project had been scrapped, but so long as there are wars to be waged, there will always be those determined to win by any means. And thus simply destroying the existing stores of Black Rose would do little to alter fate's course. In that sense, our involuntary journey here to the first was something of a boon. Together with the Exarch, we've developed a theory as to how we believe the rejoining will be set in motion. I'm sure Orianger himself will cover the subject in more detail. But I can tell you the process requires that both worlds, the Source and the First, be facing an existential threat. One being Sin Eaters, of course. They are a menace that I would dearly love to remove, and not just to avert a calamity. I may be a stranger to this world, but I will not stand idly by and let innocent people be slaughtered. That is what brought me to the gates of Yulmore. Ignoring its pretensions as a kind of capital city to what remains of the world, it is nonetheless a center of power and authority. If any solutions are to be found, I believe our search should begin there. 
What say you, old friend? Hungry for another adventure? And so we take to the road once more.
That gate up ahead is known as the Open Arms, and Yulmor itself lies beyond. This, meanwhile, is the aptly named Gate Town, the dwelling place of the many desperate souls who hope to be chosen to live in the city proper. Ah, I thought I recognised you. Brought a new friend, eh? <laughs> I'll bet you got a trick or two up your sleeve. Maybe even three. Care to show me? He's not here to compete. Leave him be. What? I was only making conversation. Attention, please! Greetings to our hopeful petitioners, one and all! Yulmo extends its warmest regards. Let it be known that a lady of distinction wishes to dine on Fish Divine. We seek a master culinarian who can guarantee seafood perfection. Dazzle the matron with your delicious dishes and life in the city will be yours to enjoy. Even on days when fish is not on the menu! Who among you will answer the call? Name yourself or another? We might not at all. <laughs> Fish, is it? <laughs> Was there anyone? What about that girl? Do you recall how I said Yulmore was a center of power and authority? Well, that is not the only reason for its fame. It is also known as the City of Final Pleasures. The noble and the wealthy who survived the Flood gathered here to live out the rest of their days in decadent abandon. A poor man could sooner pass through the Ivan Needle than Yulmore's gates. The only way the common folk can enter this perverted paradise is if they fulfill the whim of one of the privileged, and so they are picked over like market produce. back having seen your all too obvious charms we welcome you with open arms come join us in the city of splendor and live out your life in an ecstasy of endeavor ah! oh just look at those expectant faces what could you possibly be waiting for? Well, well, what have we here? An extra share of meal to celebrate our newest resident! <laughs> for you! Oh, hello! Enjoy! Thank goodness! Meal is a foodstuff which Yulmore routinely doles out to the people of Gate Town, and apparently a staple for its citizens as well. Many here rely on it to survive in these times of scarcity, yet the whole arrangement just seems... Well, let us just say it leaves a bad taste in my mouth.
There you are. The thief who claims the harvest on my behalf. Hand it over. Well, oh, oh. Forgive me. I just, I have to get into the city. I have no family and all my friends have already been chosen. No one here gives a damn about me. When the meal gets handed out, I'm lucky if I get a smell of it. No matter what I do, they won't call out my name. I'm so tired, I'm so bloody hungry. I thought maybe I could steal your idea. Get in that way. What is your name? Kai Shear. Tell me then, Kai Shear. Must it be your more or nothing? What of the Crystarium? They may not offer charity, but you would be fairly compensated for any work you did. No, no, it has to be your more. That's where all my friends are. We made a promise that we'd live together in paradise. I was to make my deal with the Ondo at the Clave. Listen carefully, and I shall tell you my plans for the business, and how best to arouse the Ulmoran's interest. You'll give me your place? Just like that. I'm giving you a chance, nothing more. What comes of it is entirely up to you. I understand. Oh, thank you, thank you! This was but one path. There will be others. But for young Kai Shia, it was the difference between life and death. I do not regret my decision, yet I will admit that a part of me wonders if it was for the best. We strive to bring swift salvation to this world that countless lives might be saved, not least your own. Even if it came at the cost of one man, should I have forged on regardless? I suppose not. Were Estinian here, he would most likely scoff at my soft-heartedness. Same old Alfido, ever the slave to sentiment. <laughs> but I thank you for your kind words nonetheless. Let us see to it that both these stories have a happy ending. Shall we return to right then? Is that... I can't be sure, but I, I think someone's in trouble. Come on, they may need our help.
Redemption is beyond us. The lament of all but saints and fools, and the comfort of the lords and ladies of this accursed place. Once they held fast against the madness, only to embrace the coming cataclysm and delight in the end of days. Perhaps in rapture they seek to lose themselves and the misery they share. Or perhaps for them alone, the promise of eternal pleasure really does hold true. Thank you. 